Yo guys, what is up? Cool Conductor here, back at it again with another video, and today we're going to be looking at this specialized rock hopper. Um, this bike is a hard tail, and um, we're going to be trying to fix it, just like the last bike we did. And um, this bike obviously needs a little bit more work than that bike, but I think we can handle it. So um, let's get into it. So to get things started, let's take a look at the most obvious problem we have here, is the brakes. I have one in my hand, and uh, that's not very good. So um, I'm going to bring you guys close up into here. So um, here we go. First let's take this brake, which obviously goes right here, and put it, okay this doesn't even have the spring, I think we might have to get another brake system, yeah, I could try and find a spring for it, no let's, let's just find another brake system off of one of my bikes, so let's go searching. Alright, so here's this bike, these brakes would probably work, but this is the bike that we just fixed in my last vi well in one of my last videos so i don't know if we should take the brakes off it and then there's this bike which is my daily rider that has very nice parts on it that the camera would focus in for us but yeah um i don't think i should take parts off this one either because um no nah, I, I don't know I, that's my daily rider so, um, I think my camera's in some weird mode here. There we go. Some stupid feature that made it look like grainy or something was on. Anyway, yeah, if worst comes to worst, I'll use the brakes off of this one. So, um, let's go try and find another bike that I don't really use that often to put, to get the brakes off of. Definitely not. These are cantilever brakes, and I wouldn't take these, even if they would work, because this is my best road bike. And back here we have too much mud on the brakes, but also those won't work because they're too small and I wouldn't take them off even if, even if they would work because these are my two nicest road bikes. So um, here's more cantilever brakes on this Trek 700, but those won't work. I mean, we could probably figure out a way for them to work, but that takes lots of time. So I guess the op only option is this bike right here. So, um, yeah. So I guess the only option is to take these brakes off of this bike. So, there we go. So let's go put these on our bike. Alright, here we go. We got our brakes. I would do some fancy editing trick to put them on, but I really do want to show you guys how to put them on. So there's three holes right here on most bikes. And then there's a little spring right here. I'm stupid. Th this is the wrong one. This one. What you're going to want to do is choose which tension you want. I think the top hole is the most tension. Let's see if I'm right about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I'm right. So let's go to the bottom, the middle hole. All right, there we are. And see if that's enough tension. Uh, let's, let's just go to the top hole. And if it doesn't fit, because this is off a completely different bike, then I'm going to loosen this. So yes, so there we go. And then put it in the top hole. Oh yeah, that amount of tension is good. Then put the original screw into here. Because I think all bikes, or most bikes, have the same threads right here. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But I really do think they do. I'm putting it in sideways. Okay, there we go. Put that on. Normally you would want to use Loctite, like you can see the previous person did, but I don't have any Loctite, so, yeah. You know, it looks like these brakes are actually going to work. Oh yeah, that amount of tension is good. Hopefully by the end of this video, this bike will be in perfect riding condition. And then before I tighten it all the way, I'm going to put this up here and uh, 
check to see where I should put my brake pad. Make sure I'm putting it in the right spot. That looks good. Then I'm going to hold it there and then tighten it like so and then continue tightening this. You could have tightened this all the way, I just didn't. So then I'm, there, I'm tightening this. There. And you'll feel it stop like instantly. Oh, oh. Yeah, there we go. And then that's pretty aligned perfectly actually. And you don't want to use two separate brake calipers. I think that's what they're called. I don't know. So um, I'm going to replace this one with this one as well. So um, I showed you that process. So now let's just replace them. There. So um, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you put this on the top spring tensioner hole, then you're going to want to put this on the same one. So that way the tension is even. And same for the bottom and the middle spring hole. So now let's unscrew the cable from this. Here we go. And luckily, this cable isn't frayed, as you can see, which is a very good sign. So there we go. Now I'll show you how to get it on here. All right, here we go. So you're gonna wanna take this end, stick it in here, then take this end, and it depends what kind of uh, brake calipers you have. Because some you stick it through a little hole, some you do this, it, uh. Yeah, it really varies between the kind of bike and brake calipers you have. But this one is like this. So what I normally do is have it like, have it about, like, both of them touching the rim. And then start tightening it. Actually, it's really hard to hold them both like this. So, just sec. There we go. Then try the brakes again. That's actually pretty good. Alright, there we go. I think that's a spot where we can actually tighten it. And we have plenty of adjustment down the road, so let's tighten it. And there we go. We have pretty decent, actually really solid brakes right there. Alright, so um, let's move on to the seat. Alright, so I already stole the front brakes from this bike. So I think it's this bike's turn. So, actually, this seat post seems to be the right size. Sorry, giant. Mine now. All right, here we go. Take the seat, stick it in here. Oh, yep, that is the right size. I'll put it about there. Then tighten it. All right, it needs to be tightened at this nut a little more. Oh, that's pretty tight. Let's make sure it's straight. Yeah, it seems straight. And then let's actually tighten it down. There we go. So now we have a seat on it. Oh, well, and it's going to fall because it doesn't have a kickstand. So now we have a seat on it. Yeah, I'm still in frame, yeah. Oh, the seat's not in frame. There we go. All right, so um, let's test the shifters now. All right, here we go. Wow, it actually shifts really good. That's actually not bad. All right, I'm going to shift it again. Wait, there. All right, I'd say that passes the test. Now, let's move on to the front shifters. All right, here we go. It's gonna be pretty sketchy doing this. Whoa. I'll make sure it doesn't hit the tripod. All right, we have here, I think these are gonna work just fine. Yeah, we got that gear. Obviously we got two, do we have three? Yes, we have three. All right, we have all those gears. So um, now let's air up the tires. All right, here we go. Let's start off with the back tire, which is really low. 
as you see, I'm squeezing it. On these mountain bikes, you don't want to put too much air, because this one doesn't have any suspension at all, and uh, it'd be pretty rough if you had like 50 or 60 pounds in it. So I'm probably going to put like 40, maybe. Let's see how it feels. I wore it uh, 19 or, or 17 now. So let's pump it. Twenty-five. Forty. Maybe a little more than forty. Forty-two. Oh, that's good. And put our nice metal valve stem cap back on here. Now let's move on to the front. Twenty-five. Thirty. Forty. Let's put like 42 or 43 in there, like, just like the back one. Again, that should probably be good. There's 44 in that one. So, yeah. Pretty sick. So now, let's just stare at it. Alright, now let's test ride it. Yo guys, so if you did enjoy, please be sure to smash that like button. Also press subscribe if you want more videos like this. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.